A NAS, or Network Attached Storage, or Network Attached Server, is something that can be done with pretty much anything you have lying around. Its uses, however, depend on what you want to accomplish. Sticking an old desktop in the corner to access files every so often, or do backups is great, but what if you want to do more? In this video, I'm going to show you my build process on converting a Raspberry Pi, wireless router, and old hard drive into a household NAS media server to stream files and video to devices. This is what I did, and this is how it was done. Starting with a slab of scrap half-inch MDF I had lying around from past projects, I took it to the table saw and used the sled to square the piece up. I didn't really have a set plan at this stage, I was more or less playing around and designing as I went. I placed the components I figured I was going to use and arranged them in the way I thought looked appealing but was also functional and allowed for good cable management. I considered things such as the Ethernet cable from the Pi being a straight and short run into the router. In this clip I'm using a switch but decided a wireless router would be better suited in a rather have it not need it than need it not have it kind of dilemma. I found where I liked them and marked their placement with a pencil. I also just eyeballed the general size I thought it should be and where to make my next cuts. I trimmed my piece to size and could tell I wouldn't like it. Up until this point I had envisioned it being more of a plaque type of design but quickly realized this would look ridiculous and I would have nowhere to hide any of the wires. So I decided to make more of an open back box. I took the piece that I trimmed off the final size and used that to cut into one inch strips. Again deciding against a flat plaque look. I didn't want to just have holes all over the place with wires running to the back, so I decided on a cable slot with the top piece to hide everything. Trimming the piece now and out of the current slab would ensure that I could use the cutoff as the top piece. You'll understand what I mean soon. I picked my highest component, in this case it's the Pi, to find the final height that this cutoff needs to be. I placed my two 1 inch back runners on a block and glued one side onto the bottom of the top part of what will be the face of this NAS box I guess you could call it. Using scrap pieces so I could more easily square all the pieces before I shot some brads into it. Always make sure you put more glue on than you actually need, especially on the places where you don't even need glue. Really make sure you get it on heavy there. I did the same on the following side and finished it off. I originally was going to leave the slot the same size as the cutoff piece, but decided this was unnecessarily big. So I just used a piece of scrap to get the final size, butting the top piece against it and bratting it down. I used the sled to trim off the ends of the side runners and to flush everything up. Ironically, one of the pieces I trimmed off the end ended up being a perfect length for the support risers for the top cable slot piece. I cut a second and test fit them in place, gave those areas a quick sanding with a sanding block and glued them in place. It is highly, crucially important when using a brush for gluing that you use one that you didn't properly clean off last time you used it and it is stiff as a board. It really makes the project go by quicker. Again, using the Raspberry Pi to test its height was correct. I placed the risers and nailed the final top cable slot piece in place. This is pretty much the bulk of the box done at this stage. There's really nothing else to add to it. Here I go through and use wood filler and fill all the gaps before sanding. If you have a really good eye, you can see here that I fill all the holes except the two dozen brad nail holes on the front of the only piece you're gonna see. Why? Because apparently I'm an idiot. I block sand the entire box and get it ready for painting. After I finished sanding the case and wiping it down, I started painting. Using any kind of primer is for perfectionist nerds. The color? I used the semi-gloss white latex paint I had lying around from the house. That's what I had, so that's what I used. And remember those nail holes I didn't fill? Well, I realized it about here. I could have left it, but it would have annoyed me to no end. So I let the paint dry, sanded the paint off, filled over them, sanded it again, and repainted. Remember to get in a rush when building anything so that it takes twice as long because you mess up. Once the paint was dry for a second time, I laid out my components how I had them before and figured out where I was going to mount them. Using a Dremel with a drill bit, I pre-drilled the mounting holes for the terminal block, the router, and the Pi. Because of the SD card being on the bottom of the Pi and trying to mitigate any chance of shorting the Pi out, I decided placing it on motherboard standoffs would be the best. 
The hard drive I could mount on a sled from a case, but I decided just to use Velcro to hold it in place. Moving on to the electrical side of things, I decided the best way to power everything was with a terminal block. You can usually find these in most hardware stores, and they're around 5 to 8 bucks. This only works if everything you are trying to power is the same range of voltage. As it stands, luckily the Pi, Switch, and hard drive all run on 5 volts. Each block section is either 5 volts or ground depending on what you decide, but you have to connect each one. For this, I decided to make a series loop wire to connect each block with spade connectors. 4 positives, red, and 4 negatives, black. Now you can see you basically get 4 spaces for 5 volts in this config. Remember that the longer your wire runs and the larger gauge of wire, the more loss you get. It's important when choosing an AC adapter that you, that you pick one with a higher amp rating. The one I chose is 5 volts, 5 amps. A 0.5 or 1 amp adapter probably won't cut it here. And this is what the series loop wire should look like, depending on how many connection slots your terminal block has. In this case, mine has four, so I make a, so I make a four connection wire. As you can see in the video, it's pretty basic on how you hook these wires up. Just skip every second screw. Each slot needs to be in pairs, one positive and one negative. You can now see all the empty slots on the top. This is where you would connect all the devices. Because everything is connected together, I can have a common positive and ground connection from the AC adapter I chose. If you need one more slot, you can always double up on connections. I only need three, so I power the block at the top. I didn't want to have to power the router via the factory plug, so I decided to wire the positive and negative directly to the PCB. Most power connections of this type have positive in the rear and negative to the side, but some may vary, but it's fairly easy to figure out which is which. I needed a spot to place the antennas for the wireless router. This being an afterthought, I have to do it now rather than before the piece is painted. I played around with where they should go, but ultimately I decided that the top would be the best. This is just a preference thing for me, but you can put them wherever you want if you're following along on the build. I drilled a hole slightly smaller than the antenna connection, but my advice would be to figure out a better way to mount these, such as epoxy or glue, because friction fit works for a while, but MDF isn't exactly the strongest material, and it just chews away, and then it just becomes loose over time. I measured and drilled two holes in the same location on each side. While I had the drill out, I drilled some mounting holes on the back of the case in case I wanted to hang this on the wall. As well as, while I had the drill out, I drilled a hole at the top of the box to fit all the connections coming in, such as the Ethernet cable and the power. Uh, make sure you drill this hole the size of your biggest connection, because I, because I don't plan anything, I drilled it too small and had to come back and rebore out the hole, which is a giant pain in the ass. Finally, I drilled the motherboard standoffs for the Pi and placed them in there. I used the standoffs to tap the hole, but my advice would be to just epoxy them or glue them in there right now, because if you ever want to take that Pi off, unscrewing the screw once it's in there will just screw out the standoff. The MDF is just not strong enough. Even tapped, it's just not strong enough to hold the standoff in there. Every single connection needs a spade connector, uh, every device, the Raspberry Pi, the router, the hard drive, the main power, they all need to have the spade connectors soldered on, so I spent some time and soldered on all those connections. And here is a hot tip for anybody that is beginner to soldering. A rundown of the parts so far are the antennas, the hard drive cable, because I'm using an external hard drive PCB to connect the hard drive to the Pi, I was able to use a Y USB cable. The Pi's USB 2.0 bus doesn't have enough power to run a mechanical hard drive, so when using a Y cable, the data end is still going to go into the USB ports on the Pi, but the power end of the Y needs to be cut, stripped, and connected to the Pi's GPIO pins, but more on that in a bit. The router, micro USB cable, cut and stripped, the terminal blocks, and the 5V AC adapter cut and stripped with spade connectors. Now it's time to start putting things together. Starting with the already assembled terminal block, I screwed it down to the holes I drilled when building the box. Next came the hard drive. I cut some Velcro strips to size and affixed them to the drive and to the box. The external hard drive PCB is just connected to the drive and not to the box in any way. I then moved to the Pi and connected it via screws to the motherboard standoffs. Lastly, the router was screwed down to the box. I didn't use any standoffs here because, well, to be honest, I didn't have any and I wasn't going to buy some. And second, I really don't care about the router in the remote off chance that it actually ever shorts out. 
To be honest, most electronics are pretty resilient nowadays, especially to low voltages like 5 volts. You could probably take the, the hot wires and start jamming around in the PCB, and touching every component, and it probably would make a difference. But don't take my word on that. I soldered on the antenna wires to the router and ran all the power cables to each device. I made a 1 inch long Cat5 cable to run from the router to the Pi, but I didn't show building that. Uh, there will be a video on how to crimp and cut a Cat5 cable on this channel soon. I also ran out of spade connectors when connecting one of the components, and I sure shit wasn't running out to the store in uh, winter in Canada to buy one, because it's cold out there, and I'm not making a special trip. So as I said before, how I'm powering the hard drive um, from the Raspberry Pi is the GPIO pins. Uh, as you can see on the chart, uh, four and six are what you're gonna need. I pulled this connector off of an old fan I had lying around. It's a two pin connector. You can find it on most things, you can buy it online, just salvage something from something you have lying around. But four and six, so make sure that positive is going into five volts and the black wire, the negative, is going into the ground. Uh, screwed up on that video, of course, because I'm a friggin' idiot, but uh, so two and two and six are all you need. And that's how you would power a USB Y cable for a mechanical hard drive. Again, if you're using an SSD or if you're using a flash drive, you don't have to worry about that. You can just put it right into the Raspberry Pi because it has enough power to run something that's not mechanical. And this has been my build log for how I built a Raspberry Pi network attached storage. I appreciate you guys bearing with me. I'm a tutorial YouTuber, but this is more of a building YouTube video. I know it's not great of a build log, but I felt I should show you what I built and how I did it before I start putting out videos on software side of NAS and uh, media Plex servers. So you do kind of know more of like what I'm doing and what I'm doing it on. This was an extravagant build. You can of course accomplish the same thing with Pi and a USB thumb drive, but this is what I will be using for my next videos. I have many Pi videos in the works, they just take time to put out. Next video will be me setting up this unit as a NAS media server using Plex. I hope you guys enjoy this video, I had fun making it. If you so choose, I would love if you subscribed, it helps me out a lot in keeping me motivated to keep pushing out more content for you guys. Thanks for sticking with me through this. Leave a comment, tell me what you think. Tell me if you hate it, tell me if you love it. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching.